Here are some basic examples on how to solve problems for projectile motion. As a reminder, in projectile motion, an object has some initial velocity with both speed and angle. And it undergoes acceleration due to gravity only. The equations governing projectile motion have many variables. You need to practice identifying which equation has the least number of unknowns. In the first example, we have a ball of known initial velocity and height thrown off a cliff, and we need to know the following. What is the maximum height reached? What is the total time in the air? Where will the ball land? And what will be its final velocity? After reading the problem and identifying known variables, you must set up the coordinate system. This will help you calculate the components of velocity needed in the equations. For maximum height, Notice there are two equations addressing this variable. However, because we don't know time, only one of those equations has all the known variables. Note that the vertical velocity is implicitly known at maximum height because maximum height is defined as where the vertical velocity is zero. Don't forget to add the change in height to your initial height. Also, double check that in your calculation it is the vertical component of velocity that you used. Otherwise, you will make a mistake. For total time in the air, there are two strategies. In the first one, again, we identify the equations that have the unknown variable. Then we narrow down the equation by looking at what variables are known. Rearranging this equation will give us a quadratic equation and we can use the quadratic formula to solve it. This will give us two solutions. Looking back at our diagram, we can safely say that our intended solution is the larger positive one. The negative solution 
is equivalent to the time at which the object would have been thrown from that bottom height before we observed it. There is a second way to calculate total time if you are not comfortable using the quadratic formula. This involves breaking apart the problem into two parts around maximum height. We will first solve for the time on the way up. Once again, we use the knowledge that vertical velocity is zero at maximum height. On the way down, we use our previous calculation for maximum height to know the distance. And now our starting vertical velocity will be zero, which will help us simplify the formula. We solve for the time for the way down and then add it to the time on the way up. Now we are ready to calculate horizontal displacement. We just calculated total time, and previously we calculated initial velocity, and we know that horizontal velocity does not change throughout the flight. To calculate final velocity, we need to know its components. Because horizontal component does not change, we only need to calculate the vertical component. We can get this from the initial velocity, the known acceleration, and the total time. Do not forget to convert back to polar coordinates. As always, reread the problem and check that you have gotten reasonable solutions for all the questions. In our second example, we are given a snapshot of an artillery shell flying above level ground with known height and speed. We are asked where was it shot from, with what velocity, where will it land, and with what velocity. This is an example of a backwards calculation problem. Note that the physics is still the same, 
and hence so are the equations. Because we are given intermediate solutions, we can still use the same equations and just rearrange them algebraically back to the initial conditions. We still start by setting up the coordinate system and this time keep the components of the initial velocity symbolic. When trying to solve for where the shell was fired from, we quickly realize we have multiple unknowns. We need to know the time, but the equations that include time have other unknowns. A strategy is to keep trying and look for a formula where there is only one unknown. In this case, the last equation has only one unknown. We solve for this unknown Keeping in mind that the vertical velocity at maximum height is, once again, zero, and then use the solution for it to plug back in to another equation. Once we know time, we can calculate the initial position from which the shell was fired from. Through these calculations, we have derived expressions for both the initial components of velocity and hence we are able to convert back to polar coordinates. Because this is a special problem where the initial and final height are the same, we can use symmetry to quickly solve for final displacement and final velocity. Note that the final velocity is not the same as the in initial velocity, nor can you just say it is the opposite of the initial velocity. Rather, only the vertical component of the final velocity is the opposite of the vertical component of the initial velocity. The magnitude of the final velocity will be the same, but the angle will be negative with respect to the horizontal compared to the initial angle. As in every problem solving, always finish 
by rereading the problem, making sure you have reasonable answers to all questions.